Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, today is going to be the third and final introductory video to plant biology and this time I have several props because the things that I need to draw are far too complicated for my artistic ability. So the first thing we will talk about is uh, leaves which are rather abundant now considering it's fall but Leaves have more variation than you might expect, so... Oof. Variation. So, the first thing to note about leaves is that they can be a simple leaf or a compound leaf. So, this leaf on the top here, uh, it came from what I'm assuming is a chili pepper, is a simple leaf. And it's simple because it only has uh, one stalk and one leaf blade. However, I also have a different leaf which came from a wild carrot, and this one is compound. And the compound means that it has many leaf blades that each go back down to the leaf stalk before the leaf is complete. So there's an attachment point at the base of the leaves here where it sticks to the branch. So looking for that attachment point is how you determine if a leaf is simple or compound. Uh, once again, when you have the uh, branch here uh, with leaves sticking out of it, the leaf being simple or the leaf being compound, you always look for the part that sticks to the branch because this compound leaf here is continuous. There is no attachment point until past the breakage where I stepped it off the plant. The actual attachment is underground. And then leaves also come in a variety of shapes. So, once again, this leaf here has a smooth edge, nothing on it, but this one, uh, coming from a nettle of some sort, a uh, fiber plant, has uh, lots of little fine teeth on the end. So, and also the petiole or leaf stalk is longer, so uh, leaf Leaf stock is called petiole. So, there are also several different ways that leaves can attach to the plant. So, you can have a longer petiole, a shorter one, a very longer one here. Like this entire thing sticks out of the ground like that. Or, you can have uh, some non attachment points. So, there is a ordinary. This is called sessile, with no petiole. Then you can have where the leaf is attached to the petiole in the middle instead of the leaf margin, which is peltate. You can have where the leaf is punctured by the stem. This is perfoliate. And then you can also have where the leaf wraps around the stem, which is uh, sheathed. And a good example of a sheathed leaf would be uh, this blade of grass or a grass branch. Which, if I zoom in far enough, you should be able to see how this was wrapped around the grass's stem. So, that is an example of a sheathing attachment. A 
leaves can also be arranged in different fashions, so if you have the uh, branch like this, with leaves here, here, and here, this would be called the alternate arrangement. But if you have the branch with the leaves in pairs, this is called opposite. These are the two most common, but they're far from the only things that plants might end up having. And there are two more that you tend to see, which are this. world arrangement where more than three uh, per branch point and finally you may end up having basal leaves where all the leaves come out of the base of the plant and they're not along the stem so uh, this carrot would be a good example of basal leaves, whereas uh, this oak branch here is a good example of alternate, although they are fairly clustered, so this can be a little bit subjective, and some people might say something else, although it would be a pretty hard sell in terms of the oaks. In just a second, uh, there's... Here is an especially weird leaf setup because the entire leaf looks like a tree. So, this is, I uh, don't know how well you can see that, but there's a basal attachment where two leaves at the moment have emerged from the soil surface and the actual stem is contained underground. But this isn't a very common setup, however, it was the closest uh, basal leaf plant that I happened to have that actually demonstrated it. So, moving on from the leaves, the next thing to talk about is the flower structures. So, while flowers seem fairly straightforward, there is uh, more terminology than meets the eye at first. So, flowers can be, you know, there's two main lineages of flowering plants, which are uh, monocots and dicots. Not every flowering plant is one or the other, like um, magnolias and black peppers are neither, but monocots tend to have uh, three petals or six. Whereas dicots have four or five multiples. And then there are also uh, some other trends as far as uh, leaf or er, leaf veins. So uh, monocots have parallel veins and dicots have webs. And again, so this leaf here from the nettle, you can see that the leaf veins are in little branching webbing patterns. So that one's a dicot, but with the blade of grass, if I zoom in far enough, it should become apparent that the leaf veins are in lines. So that's parallel and monocots are usually that set up. So 
I think I am going to have to draw out the flower structure, at least initially, because I don't have a large enough one to show you. But, this is going to be a dicot flower, just because that's the easiest. So, the parts of the flower are the uh, petals. The uh, anthers. The stigma. Um, the sepals. And the uh, ovary. And also the anthers, and this bit is called the filament. These together uh, form stamens. And the stigma and the stick called the style. That forms the pistil. So not every single flower has to have all of these parts, so if a flower is missing the pistol, it is called uh, staminate, equals a uh, male only flower, and uh, pistol is the reverse, equals a uh, female only flower. Then a plant that only produces uh, staminate or pistillate flowers is called uh, monoecious. And if they produce, sorry, a plant that produces both is called monoecious. Uh, a dioecious plant. One or B. and this is uh, both. But most plants are hermaphroditic, which means they have flowers that are both male and female. And once again, this refers to the flower structure itself. So if the flower, if each flower on the plant has male and female parts in it, it is hermaphroditic. If the plant has some flowers that are male and some flowers that are female, it's monoecious. And if the plant has only male flowers or only female flowers, it is dioecious. So it can be confusing because some people will think that a monoecious plant is hermaphroditic because it has male and female flowers, but it has flowers that are only one or the other. And there are also terms like a andromonoecious. which is uh, where some flowers uh, male, others uh, are both. Um, a good example of a plant that does this would be like citrus, for example. And I can't think of anything that is the reverse, but that would be a uh, gynomonaceous. So, on here we have a flower from a tomato relative, and this introduces the second term, which is the inflorescence. So, if I turn this over, you can see there's a second flower bud, and they're on a little branch. Uh, branch of flowers is... Fluorescence. And once again, you can clearly see that the ha flower has five petals. You can see a tiny cluster of uh, anthers here with the stamen or the stigma in the middle. And then on the back, the green thing is the sepals, which form a structure called the calyx. And uh, 
the petals together are oh, called the Corolla. If you can't determine between sepals and petals, uh, there is a catch-all term like you see in the lily family called tepals. Petals in the sepals in the sting. So, with the basic information about the flower out of the way, there is some other things like what flowers are for. So, most flowers are showy for attracting pollinators, like again, this one here is bright purple, but some of them, like you find on the oaks and other plants, are not like that. They're fairly bland because they only scatter pollen into the wind. Uh, some flowers smell really bad to attract insects like flies. Uh, some use bright colors to attract birds. Some use good smells at night to attract moths or bats. It is really extremely dependent on what the plant is. There are even some flowers underwater that rely on small uh, animals like amphipods to pollinate them. So once again, there is no set thing about that. But there is some confusion with flowers because this uh, dandelion here, as well as everything else in its family, would appear to be a single flower. However, it's actually not. It's the entire inflorescence. So, so the dandelion, the entire inflorescence, makes up a single false flower structure. Uh, the entire family is like that, and as you might imagine, because the flowers are so small on each one, it is exceptionally difficult to identify them. There are 30,000 species, and each one requires hours under a microscope, if you're going to get a very good look at it, depending on how many others there are in the area. So, now that the flowers have been explained in a general fashion, we can move on to fruits. So. Uh, fruit equals uh, anything from the ovary of a flower. So, while these, like this uh, chili pepper here, is a fairly typical example of a fruit, there are others that are less conventional, such as, so this uh, conventional fruit here equals uh, animal dispersed. However, uh, these two fruits at various stages of ripening are from the plant datura, which is a relative of the chili pepper, but they are decidedly not edible. They're covered in spiky bits, uh, they taste rather terrible, and also, they are extremely poisonous, and eating one would shut your organs down, so don't do that. But these fruits are not made to be eaten by animals. Instead, they're made to dry out like this one and crack open, which uh, perhaps all the seeds already fell out of this one, but it caused a huge uh, blanket of seeds on the ground that fall out of the ripe fruit. And then there are yet more types of fruits that will explode, some will float away on the water surface. But much like flowers, it's extremely diverse in terms of how plants will disperse their seeds like that. So I think that concludes the introductory videos. In the next one I'll talk about specific kinds of plants. Uh, in this case, a rather uh, more interesting relative of this fiber nettle. But uh, thank you and have a good day.